if I wanted to pick an exact magnification and I then have a round number in this data bar, then I could pick it from this magnification tab and the microscope will go directly to that magnification. I'm going to center this defect on the sample by using one of my stage movement tools. You see the one that's active right now is the stage get mode and that's the crosshair, the icon that I have on the mouse right now. If I want to bring something to the center with the get mode, I just left double click on the feature and it brings it close to the center of my field of view. Another stage movement tool we use a lot is the donut tool, technically called the tracking mode. If I activate tracking mode, you see it brings up this donut on the screen. At the center of the donut in the hole, my icon changes. In the top half of the donut hole, I have a plus. And that's a fine zoom in when I left click. In the bottom half of the donut hole, I have a fine zoom out. Those are much smaller steps than you get by using the number pad. This is a gross zoom in, the plus sign, and a gross zoom out, the minus sign on the keyboard. So I'm at 11,000. I want to bring this feature to the center using the get mode. So when I left click anywhere outside of the donut hole, you see the stage will track that direction. And you can see they're pretty rough movements. Under high magnification, you can actually see the step size of the motor. Once I have it in the center, I'm going to focus one more time. And now I'm going to adjust the lens alignment on the microscope. To capture an image, first thing I usually do is auto adjust the contrast and then I push F2 on the keyboard to capture the image. F2 is a macro that scans the whole field of view in the slowest scan rate. It's actually going through slow scan 4 right now. At the end of the field it's going to freeze this image and block the beam so the sample isn't being exposed to the beam right now and we can take our time in looking at this image but this isn't saved, it's only frozen in the microscope control. In order to save it, we need to transfer it into our database called Scandium. And once it's stored over on Scandium, I'm going to go back to live imaging by unfreezing this picture. Once the macro is finished, you can transfer that image into the Scandium database by picking your folder from the left menu and then picking the camera with the yellow tube behind it, snapshot to database Scandium. That brings the image over to the database and then it prompts you for a sample name. Click insert and now our image is saved in the Scandium. So we can return to the microscope control and continue imaging. After you've imaged one area of the sample like this, if you want to move to a new area, you would change over to the stage track mode, change the scan rate to TV, and then just left click anywhere outside of the donut hole. And you can see we're moving the sample to the left, so we're imaging more to the right side of it now. And we're only moving in really small steps of about one micron right now. If you want to move faster, you need to zoom out and you can move to a new part of the sample. And you can also track where you're moving by watching the X on the stage table and that will reflect what part of the sample you're imaging to. When you get to a new area of interest, you magnify. And when you find a feature you want to bring to the center, you change back to the stage get mode, the crosshairs, and double click on that feature. And then when you zoom in, bring it back to center and focus. If I want to take measurements, I want to work from a frozen picture so that there's no movement. So I'm just going to scan this image and then I'll show you the measurement tool. So in addition to the scale bar across the bottom here that measures 200 nanometers, I can also use this ruler tool, which brings up a measurement menu. I can measure along the x-axis, y-axis, or random points. And you see that my icon right now is a crosshair. I find it hard to see the edges of the particle through the crosshair, so I like to change to the pointer. I'm going to measure a horizontal nanoparticle along the horizontal element. I'm just going to left click and drag from edge to edge. This is measuring 16.2 nanometers. Then if I wanted that to appear on the picture, I just click accept. And you can see that my picture is labeled now 16.2 nanometers is the diameter of this uh, individual particle. 
after I've labeled the picture, I can print this image with the labels on it by going to In Out Video Print. And we have a thermal printer that will produce that right here. If you wanted to save an image that had these labels on it, instead of using this measurement tool, you'd use the Scandium measurement tool. And down along the left margin here, you see there are different axes, vertical measurement, horizontal measurement, or arbitrary line. I'm going to zoom in so that I can see better. And you can see that my image is getting pixelated, so I won't go any further into it. And I'm just gonna take a horizontal measurement using Scandium. You left click the left side of the particle and then left click the right side of the particle. It gives me the length of that particle is 38 nanometers. When I'm done with the measurement, I have to push escape to drop that measurement tool. And then I'm gonna zoom out and I can save this image with the label on it. The measurement is already inserted onto the picture and I need to burn it into the overlay to save it. It gives me a warning that all of the image beneath that label and beneath this mark are going to be, is going to be lost. And I'm okay with that at this point because I'm going to save a raw image as well as a labeled image. That way I don't actually lose any data. So I'll click OK and then File, Save As. We have a network drive where we save all of the images. So in order to access that network drive, I'm going to go to the desktop link and the drive is called NTUF Users on Bleach. So I open this network drive and I see there are folders for each user, which I'm going to hunt down my own folder, open it, and then within my folder I'm going to create a new folder with today's date. And that will keep my images organized. You see that 10.14.09 is here in the left corner. Now that I have that open, I'm going to click Save. And it saved that image now in my own folder so that I can get to it later.